Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. Today, uh, I'm coming at you. We're going back in time, so to speak, once again, and I will be looking at the year 2008, and we'll be talking about my top 15 movies that came out in that year. And as you can see, the, the later that we go here, uh, the list becomes shorter because, as you know, as, as you all very well know, as time goes on, there's more and more and more and more bad movies that are coming out. So, you know, but again, I think every year I can find at least five movies that I do like. But remember, guys, I hate everything. Oh, well, anyway, uh, before we jump into this, as always, if anyone would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There's a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if anyone's interested, go ahead, send it in. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Um, it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like at Blockbuster. So thank you. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, I'll try to get through these not super duper, ooper, 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 quick, but quickly enough. So coming in at number 15, we have Pineapple Express. I did not see this movie up until about, I think, two years ago. I finally watched it. I had the picked up the Blu-ray really cheap somewhere, and I had never seen it. I think my brother had seen it, and I really liked it. Um, I'm not, as you know, I'm not a, uh, not a huge Seth Rogen fan by any stretch of the imagination, but this is one of the few movies that I can tolerate and stand him in so i have to put pineapple express on here number 14 harold and kumar escape from guantanamo bay i like all three of the harold and kumar movies white castle is always going to be my favorite but i do like this one quite a bit as well i thought it was a, a good follow-up it was a fun sequel um more of what made that first movie what it was which is nice Excuse me. Cannot complain about Harold, any of the Harold and Kumar films. Hard to believe that the first movie is going to be 20 years old this year. That's that's crazy. There you go. Number 13, Step Brothers. Uh, again, I was never the biggest Will Ferrell fan, uh, especially nowadays because he turned into a uh, weirdo. But um, I do like Step Brothers. When uh, the first, not the first time, uh, the last time actually. I'm sorry. The last time that I went to Florida, went to Disney World. We took my cousin and her husband. They had just gotten married, and they only had uh, two DVDs for the trip, which was Step Brothers and The Hangover. So we watched those two movies uh, several times on that trip, which was fun. But it, it was cool. But I, I do like Step Brothers quite a bit. This is when Will Ferrell was kind of at the top of the game. And he was still funny. He's not funny anymore. Um, but I do quite enjoy And John, I do like John C. Riley quite a bit. I do really like him as an actor. And he's good in this too. Number 11. Or no, no, no. I'm sorry. My, my apologies. I skipped one. Uh, number 12, almost. Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. I really like both of the Hellboy films have to include the second one. It sucks that we never got a third one because they definitely could have done something really cool, really special. But the problem is that this movie came out around the same time as The Dark Knight and that was the big, huge comic book film and this one wasn't. But I still really like Hellboy 2. Not sure which one I like more, the first or the second. I haven't watched them in, in quite a while. Um... But I dig Hellboy 2 quite a bit. Now, number 11. I'm sorry. Drill Bit Taylor. I really like this comedy. I, I do like Owen Wilson quite a bit. I've always been a fan of his work and his brother, Luke. But I really dig this. I remember 
when this first came out on DVD, a friend of mine rented it and we watched it together and, and I had a good time with it. I have it on Blu-ray somewhere around here. But I really like Drill Bit Taylor. It's a good high school comedy um, and Owen Wilson is really what makes it work because he's quite funny. I've, I've always dug Owen Wilson. Number 10, uh, not only one of my favorite movies of this year, but one of my mom's favorites, Four Christmases. I I love Vince Vaughn. I do. Um, the first thing that I saw him in was probably The Lost World, Jurassic Park. And ever since then, you know, I'm not a big fan of that movie, but ever since then, I've been a big fan of Vince Vaughn. So back then, when he was at the top and he was making big movies, not now he's kind of on the back burner, but that's okay. Um, you know, I always look forward to his films, and I did like this one. I remember watching this on pay-per-view, actually. Uh, it was at Christmas. Um, I went to my uncle's, and he bought this on pay-per-view, and it was me and my mom and my brother, my grandparents and my uncle, and we all watched it and enjoyed it. And I still uh, quite like this. Uh, this is one that I try to watch every Christmas because it's fun. I'm looking. I have the Blu-ray. Um, I guess I've already watched. I thought I didn't watch it yet, but it's it's somewhere in here with all the other ones. But yeah, <clears throat> I do quite like Four Christmases. Uh, number nine, You Don't Mess With the Zohan. I really like this Adam Sandler movie. I always did. It's so goofy in a good way, and it's ridiculous, and it's zany, and it's wacky. But that's why I like it. I mean, obviously, Adam Sandler, uh, you would not buy as a Israeli special forces guy, but that's why it's a movie. Um, I know a lot of people got mad when this came out and they said it was offensive and this and that. No, it's a comedy. It's it's supposed to be offensive. That's the point. Um, but I always dug this one. I always really liked You Don't Mess With The Zohan. It's one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies. And this is kind of when... At least in my opinion, his film started to really dip off, and then it was kind of like the same shit over and over again. Anyway, number eight, Iron Man. I the first Iron Man is still my favorite. I don't mind Iron Man two. I think it's a it's a good sequel, but I think that's when they toned it down and they made it less dark and less serious, and then it you know became the Disney version, as we all know. But um, I still quite enjoy the first Iron Man. I think it's a good, really good comic book film. Not my favorite, but it's still a really good comic book film. Um, and it created what we have today with the cinematic universe, unfortunately. But I still really like the first one. But coming in at number seven, I like this one a lot more. The Incredible Hulk. Solid sequel. Edward Norton was great as the character. I really enjoy this and... The first Hulk, which we covered in the 2003 video previously. I really like both of these films. Uh, these were paid requests, I want to say maybe about two years ago. A little bit, maybe a year or two ago. But uh, more recently, I got to rewatch these and review them. And I still had a great time with them. Uh, they are both fantastic. I don't know which one I like more because... This one was more of the traditional comic book film. It had more of the characters and the action, but I still really like that first one. Um, I don't know. I have to really think about that. Number six, The Wrestler. Mickey Rourke should have won the Oscar for this, but I do remember when this came out, being a big wrestling fan, I really wanted to see it. I think I saw it when it first came out on DVD. But uh, didn't get to see it in the theaters. But I still really like it. It's it's a great job, drama. It's not a pretty film. It's not a nice film. It, it definitely uh, shows the dark side of what wrestling is and what wrestling has become, unfortunately. But it is true. Uh, so it is, it's not an easy movie to sit through, especially if you are a wrestling fan. But it is a fantastic film. It is a great movie. Uh, cannot go wrong with with uh, The Wrestler, in my opinion. Number five, Red Belt. Great martial arts drama. This is a film that I had no clue what it was. Uh, it came out on DVD. I saw it when it first came out on DVD and really liked it. I still watch it constantly. It's a, it's a great movie. 
Uh, it does help that Dan Inosanto is in the film, one of my instructors and, and a great martial artist, absolutely. So it does give brownie points there, but it is a great film. Cannot complain about Red Belt. Number four, Tropic Thunder. I absolutely love this. I'm the dude that's playing the dude that's disguised as another dude. You could not make this movie today. I know they've tried to cancel it time and time again, but Ben Stiller says no. Thank you, Ben Stiller. I agree with him on that. Um, but it is a great comedy, and it shows the the whole point of Robert Downey Jr. playing the dude that's playing a dude that's disguised as another dude is showing the crazy, ridiculous shit that actors do to get awards and to get recognition and everything. So that was part of the joke, and it fucking worked. But everybody else is great in it. It is one of my favorite comedies from the 2000s. I never get tired of watching it. It's it's a modern classic, in my opinion. Number three, one of my favorite Clint Eastwood films, Gran Torino. I saw this in the theaters. I snuck into it because... They claim that they sold out of tickets when they didn't. I bought a ticket for Valkyrie, and then I went in, and there were seats still left in uh, Gran Torino, so I grabbed a seat and really liked it. And I still love it. Uh, it is a classic Clint Eastwood movie. I would say um, one of his best performances, one of his great films. I wouldn't say it's his last great film, because I did like um, Trouble with the Curb. I did like. That was a good good little drama. I still need to see Cry Macho and The Mule, so I'm a little behind on those movies, which is probably why The Mule is not on. I think that came out in 18. It's not on my 18 list. I apologize. Sorry about that, folks. Um, but Gran Torino definitely has to get in the top three for me. Number two, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I do not care. I like this movie. I have defended this movie ever since I've been here on YouTube. Um, I saw this in the theater and loved it in the theater. I've had it on DVD. I have it on Blu-ray. I never get tired of watching this movie. Me, Matt, and Mike did a two-hour stream defending the film. That was a lot of fun. Uh, just us talking about it. And I never get tired of defending this movie. It's not bad. Uh, did, did you see the one that came out after it? Because that one was pretty fucking bad. But not this one. I, I don't care. I absolutely love Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Is it my least favorite Indiana Jones movie? Yeah, and it's only because I like the other three more. But it's not a bad movie in any sense of the word, in any stretch of the imagination. So there you go. And my favorite movie of 2008, which comes as a surprise to absolutely nobody, Rambo 4. I'll, I have always called it Rambo 4. I will always call it Rambo 4. I'm not calling it just Rambo. Um... Because, to me, it's, again, Rambo 4. I was looking because I'm like, do I have the director's cut on Blu-ray? I do. But I absolutely love it. The quote, live for nothing or die for something, that really stuck with me. Um, I don't know why, but I kind of use that as one of my mottos, so to speak. But Stallone, like he did with Rocky Balboa, he showed that he could still do the things that people said he couldn't do. And he could show that he could still be Rambo and still be relevant. So, can't go wrong. I wish that there was no CG. That's the only thing I don't like in the film because the first three movies were all practical. But it is what it is, I suppose. Unfort I mean, it did well when it came out, but it actually made more money than it they reported because people bought tickets for one movie and went to see another. So, technically, it did make more money than they reported it as, but it was a different way. But I really liked it. Unfortunately, I did not get to see it in theaters. I wish that I did. I'm sure that wouldn't have been an amazing experience, but I did not get to, sadly. But I saw it when it first came out on DVD, and I still love it. The director's cut, there's things in the director's cut that I do like, but I prefer the theatrical version because the director's cut took a lot of the good stuff out, but some of the stuff they put in is nice. So I will say that. But that's it. Short, sweet, and to the point. That is my top 15 films of 2008. As always, I like to hear your guys' thoughts at the bottom. I like to hear what you think your favorite movies are. And the next one that I do of these 
will be 2013 and then we only have 2018 left so we are getting down to the nitty gritty on me doing these for a little while so we'll see you guys on the next one later